it is bright and early in the morning and it's tire install day. Let's go. We're heading to Gills in West Lebanon. I am loaded up. See you, Cadillac. I feel like I'm sneaking out of the house early Saturday morning. Woo. I pray this goes well. I pray that everything smooths out. So much expectation in this one, perhaps, final, and I've said that before, final, <laughs> final project. So this morning I'm going to a place called Gills. They did a front end alignment on this van before. Uh, it's a great place, it's been recommended by all the other shops in the area that don't have the capabilities that they have. So that's where I'm going. So by the way, a person mentioned to me on YouTube that the Cadillac ETS is a fine car, but I simply need to drive like a gentleman. And I just kind of laughed because I thought, this person doesn't know me very well. I I infuriate my wife because I drive slow in this on the dirt road. I drive even slower in the Cadillac on the dirt road. I've been working on cars my whole life. I inherit the pain of a broken car. I might enjoy working with my hands, but I can't stand a car that needs parts replacement, just basic parts replacement to keep it running. What I like doing is modifying cars, making them better, making them prettier. That's the fun stuff. But I respect cars and I don't abuse cars. I know what breaks a car. And this Cadillac has been babied more than any car I've ever owned because it feels so fragile. More so because it feels so fragile. Now the Cadillac's feelings are not due to abuse on my part, for sure. And again, how my wheels got bent. Perhaps they were bent from the beginning when I bought them used from a guy, but, and they may have been, I'm not saying they weren't. They never made the sh car shake this much. This feels like a new problem. So it could have been my wife out and about with the car. I don't remember hitting anything, but I think it's a new symptom. I think the bend that I have on the wheels is new or more severe than it was. It doesn't matter, we're gonna put new on and we're never gonna let anyone else drive my car ever again. All right, we're about to cross the state line into New Hampshire and then Gills is just on the other side of this bridge. All right, here it is. This is it. Wheels are loaded up on this gorgeous morning. So Rob is back there tearing the wheels down, making quick work of it. He said they will take my old wheels and they just scrap them. So I was very much in support of that since I don't want them just sitting in my garage. All right, this is them. So we ended up with the same road force number, similar, a little different, but similar. And the guy tells me this is due to a little bit of stretch in the tire, but there's still life in them. He thinks I won't feel them. Now the good news is there's hardly any weights on these now, whereas before I had giant chunky ones, but he thinks I won't feel it. I hope so. So one of the things I was worried about was that my tires were part of the problem. And one of them balanced out was a 16. One was a 13. None of them were zeros. Don, the guy who did the work, has been doing it for 40 years, practiced, elegant to watch him work. He says, I'm not gonna feel it. He said the, the rating on the tires I'm getting from road force balancing is due to a little bit of tire stretch with age. And there's still life on these tires, they're not new, but it's basically what he was saying, it's pretty normal as the tire gets old. So now we just need the test drive. I'm gonna be so frustrated if wheels were only one part of the equation 
and tires are the other problem. <laughs> So the weights on the wheels, 16, 13, 8, and 5. Not as many weights though, not nearly as many weights on the wheels, so I'm still super hopeful. Let's go install them, see what happens. All right, I made these high-performance hub-centric rings. They're 12 thousandths of an inch thick. This is hardened stainless steel. It's basically a strap that's the same diameter when you wrap it around the hub as the hub. Takes up all the space, makes things a little more smoother. Alright, cap is on and it's test drive time. Let's do it. But first, I gotta clean myself up. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm showered, cleaned up, I got shorts on. It looks pretty darn cool. That's a good looking wheel. I haven't even cleaned and detailed yet. My car's a wreck. I'm gonna run chrome lug nuts. Just to accent the chrome on the rest of the car, I think it looks killer. See, I like it. But I got new lugs coming that have a more modern design to them. All right, let's do this test drive. You know, I was a little disappointed to see 16 pounds. So at 10 miles an hour, no vibration. This one's funny, this is what I do down dirt roads here. 10, sometimes when they're really smooth, I've gotten up to 20, 25. But for the most part, I'm a 10 mile an hour kind of guy. I try to keep the dust down, the dirt down. It still gets on the car. How could a car so nice be so much trouble? So the goal is to just not hit anything, ever. Don't hit a pothole, don't hit bumps, nothing. I'm just glad I no longer live in Southeast Michigan because, oh man, some of the biggest potholes ever. All right, we are coming upon pavement. Just hit a bump. 36 miles per hour. I'm gonna roll them up so we have silence. There's 50 miles an hour, dead smooth. 60. Oh, that felt really good. Did we do it, folks? Is it possible? 74. Silk. <laughs> There's still a, a little tiny bit of a grr, growl in the back. I'm telling you, I still think that rear end's vulnerable. Still a little bit of growl in the rear end. That's what I felt when they said, never mind. It's way better than it was. It's not 100%. I think that rear end's bad. But she is silky smooth at speed now. Now I'm coming up to a big downhill. I'm going to throw it neutral and see if there's any vibration. I mean, there's none now under load. Let's see what it's like with no load. Of course, there's a car in front of me. It's going slow. Oh, it's really quiet. It's really smooth. It's super quiet. Super quiet. This is night and day difference from where I was with the other wheels. 55, 53, I could feel it. I feel nothing. So I gotta go visit some family, but on my way back home, I'll take highway. Everything I've done since I got the car back has made it the tiniest bit incrementally smoother. Right now, it's the smoothest it's ever been. But just like I told them before, when I took it for a test drive after they road force balanced my winter wheels, it was smooth. It wasn't perfect, but it was smoother. And I hit the hill, and there's the growl in the back end. And you can feel the vibration. It really does feel like another failing rear end. A guy online told me that when he was talking to General Motors in the dealership in a conference call, that they said to him, trade it, get rid of it, who cares? 
they didn't care they weren't going to help him i know that you got to make a decision about what's worth it what's not worth it but eventually how many people do you turn off that way that you end up with this voice in the marketplace saying yikes i had a bad experience don't buy there you know don't go there seems short-sighted the real test will be sustained highway speed get it nice and warm drive it for a while sustained 70 miles an hour and see what it does all right i'm gonna stop here i'll be back when i'm heading home on the highway all right i'm down in springfield and i had a very much needed family gathering and that's done so now i'm heading to the highway i'm gonna head north on 91 maintain some speed get this thing good and warm see how it performs at sustained highway speeds it is 89 degrees in vermont 89 degrees is very hot i'm on it it's very responsive very smooth so i put the 16 pounder in the front above 80 guess where the vibration is now <laughs> in the front this is tire so we fixed 95 percent of it but above 80 which i don't do that ever i mean rare but highway speeds all day long 70 75 perfectly fine above 80 i start to feel which is exactly what don said around 80 and above you'll start to feel it he was right all right i'm gonna lock in at 75 with cruise control 77 miles an hour steering wheel smooth back ends quiet and smooth acceleration's good uphills good these tires will be next on the list but man all day long 75 miles an hour this is silky smooth but above 80 i start to get front end vibration which is where i put the 16 pound tire he labeled it that way he said depends on where you move it if you move it to the back you'll feel it in the back you move it to the front you'll feel it in the front he recommended trying it in the front the other point that he made was low profile tires these are 40 series tires they're extremely stiff very unforgiving but this car is now very drivable it feels perfect but if i'm going to hit the drag strip i'm going to need new tires first but we'll wait on that next year maybe i'm happy what am i going to call this 95 percent 95% apparently having round wheels is a priority is it's important who knew so is this fixed no we need new tires it's not an emergency I hardly ever do highway I hardly go anywhere with this car around town it's I'm never gonna feel it it'll always be silky smooth so when I get new tires next time these are general G max RS they were new tires at the time I thought I'd give them a try I've liked them, but the sidewalls are kind of soft, and obviously they're perhaps a little weak. So the longer I drive under Excel, I start getting rear end vibration. I'm telling you, this rear end, the only reason it's rolling quiet at all is because of the Amsoil SVG. Under the factory fluid, it was screaming. I should have just left it alone. It's starting to make noise climbing up any hill in cruise control you start to hear a rumble in the rear end as soon as it gets too hot negative load droning positive load vibration all right final conclusion new wheels helped out tremendously i don't care how the old ones got bent i'm just walking away from all of that new wheels they're perfectly round they roll super smooth up to 80 and then I start getting some shake. But that's not the wheels, that's the tires. So next season, when I buy new tires for this car, I'll get a good quality tire. We'll road force balance them again and see what our numbers come back at. And then we'll get out here and see, can I go above 80? Will we be vibration free? Hey, and even by the end of the summer, will this rear end deteriorate? Or will it just kind of hold where it's at? If it holds where it's at, I will assume that the vibration I'm feeling isn't the rear end and it is the tires. Either way, let me just conclude by saying the new wheels look awesome. I like them a lot and I'm really happy with the way this car is driving. As far as I'm concerned, 
It's time to detail this thing, clean it up, get a fresh coat of wax for the summer on it, and just drive it and enjoy it. I'm happy where I'm at. One step at a time. <laughs> so that's that. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for following along. This has been one heck of a drama. Uh, but there is one more thing. Let me show you this. This is the noise front end makes. Listen. definitely far over left every time so I got to get underneath and find out what that is we're gonna work on that next it never ends God bless you be safe out there have a great summer we'll see you next video